Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1976 film Squirm, and it is available on the Shutter streaming service when I was doing this review. So anyway, uh, first off, I mean spoilers for this because it's from 1976, but a lot of people probably haven't seen this film. So I would say up front, if you're th on the fence on this one, I would say if you like films that are dumb concept, that are kind of a so bad it's good type thing, I'd give this a watch. It's not one of those ones that I would necessarily come back to because it's so bad it's good, but um, it, it was definitely fun to watch it once and just kind of marvel at this is an idiotic concept and how did it get made? Uh, but we all know that. Like we, we know why. There was this time period where all horror films were pretty much greenlit. If you, if you had a script... It, someone would put money towards backing that and you can make the film. And and this is totally one of those films. It's an idiotic concept. And, and most people can agree with that. And there, that said, though, there are some cool things that they, that they did get done with the film. Overall, the directing's fine. The acting is not good. It is not good at all. But in certain instances, that makes it pretty nice and comedic for the so bad it's good element. So um, stuff to appreciate. This film was written and directed by Jeff Lieberman, who did films Blue Sunshine, Just Before Dawn, Remote Control, and Satan's Little Helper, just to name a few that are horror. Most of the financing came from Broadway producers Edgar Lansbury and Joseph Baru. You may say, what does Broadway have to do with a film like Squirm? I don't know. It just happened. That's the 70s, man. Uh, shot in Georgia and using millions of worms from Georgia and Maine. Uh, actually, half of the ones in the film were actually rubber, but they still had to bring in a ton of worms uh, for this. So they sourced from Georgia, which is where they were actually shooting. Uh, they brought the rest in from Maine that they needed. And actually, weirdly enough, this ended up causing a worm shortage in Maine that year for fishermen. So there were a bunch of fishermen who were like, I'm ready to go fishing. Let me go get my bait. No worms. Why are there no worms? Oh, because there's this movie called Squirm that's going to be coming out. It's being shot down in Georgia, and they needed our worms. It's such a weird thing. But I like, I like learning those behind-the-scenes things. Uh, this was actually cut from an R rating to a PG rating. Um, okay, I... I I assume the version we got was an R version on Shudder, but what would a PG version of this be like, and why would you want a PG version of this film? Uh, this film actually appeared uh, one of the seasons of Mystery Science Theater 3000, where it got their treatment. If people are not familiar with that, you need to be, and if you loved Mystery Science Theater 3000 and don't know about riff tracks, you need to check that out. Basically, the same a bunch of the same people who didn't, MST3K, doing more current films and just releasing the audio online that you can purchase and sync up with the movie yourself. It's awesome. The premise for this came from Lieberman seeing his brother shocking worms to bring them out of the ground at one point when he was trying to uh, collect them for bait for going fishing. So that was the concept. He thought back to this and he's like, oh, you know, maybe we can do a horror movie based off of this. He also had some other inspiration such as <clears throat> the film the birds and an incident which i didn't know about this is very weird in floyd's knobs indiana where a migration of millipedes ended up sending hundreds of millipedes into people's homes that's crazy to think that that actually happened that's a, that's a really weird thing so knowing that and watching the movie you can see the similarity where that inspiration is let me try and fix this Okay, whatever, it's fine. Uh, so Kim Basinger actually auditioned for the role Jerry in this film, which I was like, why is Kim Basinger not in this film then if she auditioned for it? So they passed her up because they said that she didn't she didn't look like she would be from a hick town. Now, the, the terminology, I'm doing this because that's the phrasing that was used. I would say a rural community. But um, the, the use of the term Hicktown actually speaks to 
some of the bias against rural people that's in this film, which I think is one of the biggest things at play. Not not intentionally, I don't think, but it shows through in the script writing of it, and it creates this kind of um, division between city dweller, you know, a city liver and a rural person, a hick. Um, and it actually portrays the people who are from the rural town as being particularly stupid and weird, which, you know, is not a fair thing to do, but, you know, this was the seventies, you know, we got a lot of those types of things in horror movies in the seventies and eighties. And prior to that, lots of stereotypes and, um, that type of stuff probably wouldn't be done as much today, but it was back then. So anyway, uh, so yeah, Kim Basinger auditioned for the role of Jerry there would have been some good acting in the film if Basinger had gotten that role, but they passed on her because she didn't look right for it. Now, that said, Lieberman afterwards, you know, many decades later, has said that he regrets not having hired Basinger. Duh, I'm sure. Um, interesting. So, uh, Martin Sheen actually was supposed to play Mick in this initially. And uh, apparently there were some creative differences that, that ended up meaning that didn't happen. Which, once again, had this film been done with Martin Sheen and Kim Basinger, it could have been a much different film. But as it stands, it's, you know, maybe it ended up being better that way for people in our time now. I don't know. Bernard Herrmann, uh, the composer for films such as The Day the Earth Stood Still and Psycho, was actually slated to do the soundtrack for this film, but ended up passing away before it. So... Who knows what music we would have gotten with it. I think the music that's with it is good enough. Like, it's solid. It, it goes with the film. It's good. It doesn't distract you as being like, oh, that doesn't really work. So, good enough. One whole week of the five-week shoot of this film was dedicated just to shooting the worms. That's, that's insane to think about. Like, one-fifth of the entire filming time was for worms. <laughs> it's just a weird comment. Uh, Brian De Palma liked Squirm and actually featured a poster of the film Squirm several times in his very famous film Blowout, which a lot of people who are De Palma fans will tell you is probably his best film. I've not seen it, but it's on my list. I will get to it at some point. Okay, so to the, to the events of the film. Uh, the storm battering things in the very beginning works really well. They obviously show you how the power ends up getting into the ground because the power line snaps and it's, you know, wiggling around like a worm, getting that electricity everywhere. So that works. But the song, the song with the events in the beginning is so weird and terrible. And it, it, it's like this kid singing this kind of childish song in, in a bit of a creepy way. But the singing is horrid. Like, it's not even good singing. It's I hate that. I hate that song. It's, it's awful. The close-ups of the worms early on is actually really gross, the way they did it, and they look menacing, and they look disgusting, and all that stuff. So that did what it was supposed to. I'm sure that's exactly what they were going for. It worked. Uh, mix awkwardness and goofiness is kind of a way to show that the city type don't really belong in a more rural setting. You know, obviously there, there's a lot of contention that happens between Mick because he's from the city and everyone else because they're rural. Obviously, Jerry is more accepting and her sister Alma, they're way more accepting because they're younger and they kind of um, are more interested in a city life potentially. And you see that because Alma is actually like reading a beauty magazine and yeah, it just seems more hip to it. And it's weird that she keeps pulling joints out of her bra, like, throughout the film, by the way. I, just, I was just like, what is going on here with her? But yeah, I, I thought that they made Mick very awkward and kind of goofy in the very beginning to kind of show that he, as a person, does not match the setting for where he is. And that becomes even more apparent as the film goes on. And then he becomes the hero, basically, which I feel like kind of signals, like, these rural folks are way too stupid and inbred and backwoods to even, you know, handle their own problems. So they need this dude from the city who's obviously so much smarter to come in and solve everything. Which, when you step back and look at, you know, how things played out, none of it really makes sense. Why would Mick even care? This isn't even his mystery to solve. Like, why would he even care that much? 
how does he even have all this knowledge? That's another thing. How would he be figuring this out? It's all basically like they're hanging their hat on just the fact that he's from the city. He must be very smart. Ridiculous. So Mick asking if people eat the worms from Willie's farm uh, when he was talking to Jerry in the truck shows how people from the city view those in the rural towns as actually being less civilized. And that that further helps to set up in the beginning this divide between city folk and rural folk. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that's effective because the fact that he would believe, like he would ask a question like that seriously, like people eat the worms, like it, it's such like a feeling of like these people are kind of almost savages in a way. So... There's some rough acting, and sometimes the accents really slur the actual words that are going on, so that becomes a problem with this film. Like, legitimately, there are lines that I have no idea what they said. The accents, in general, aren't a problem. There are just some characters where, like, the acting's bad, and their accent is such that it's just like, I'm like, I got none of that. I got nothing. Um, by the way, Jerry got extremely creepy in the truck when she was talking about how the worms around there bite. And she even says it's like blood worms and sand worms around there. It's not normal worms, which are the worms that they ended up using in the film primarily were blood and sand worms uh, because they look more freaky. Um, so, but I thought she was very creepy the way she was delivering those lines of like, oh, the, the worms around here bite, which I'm assuming was intentional. So it kind of, you know, it worked. Sheriff Reston's attitude toward Mick, uh, because he's from the city, further drives that point about, you know, the rural versus city folk. Because uh, it just seems like as soon as he even shows up, like Sheriff Reston is just like, like giving him the stink eye consistently. And then the worm in the egg cream happens, which, is that really a thing? Was that a thing, the egg cream? Um, so that happens, and then Reston's immediately like, oh, you jokester, you're, always, you're just trying to cause trouble around here. I don't know how you do it in the city. You know, stuff like that. It's weird. Which, by the way, uh, on share, the topic of share, Sheriff Reston, does he do work? Like, it legitimately seems like he's never actually doing things for his job. He's just going around insulting people, just hanging out, going on dates, and boning in the jail. Like, actually in the jail cell. So when he ends up getting it, you're just like, eh, okay. Quigley's, the bar... Looked cool. I like the design of Quigley's, and I would. That looks like a place I would like to stop into to have a few beers. That would be fun. Um, later on, when all the worms, like the the sea of worms, come through Quigley's, I think is also a cool moment in the film. Like all the shootings of like the the floor covered in worms are really cool visuals. Uh, that is not when I would want to be at Quigley's. But sans worms, I'm down with Quigley's. Mick putting together that the worm in his egg cream somehow actually uh, correlates with the missing worms from Roger's truck is such just like an idiotic scene of him putting that together. It's so overly dramatized, and it's just like, you're also just like, how is he putting this together? Oh yes, because he's from the city. That, that You know, that must be why, because he's city folk, so he knows this. It's ridiculous. Uh, here's a great quote. If only we knew whose bones these are. Uh, when they find uh, Beardsley's body that's been stripped of, of everything because of the worms. I mean, it's weird because Mick seems to care a lot about solving this mystery about the, these bones. And everyone else who comes in contact with these bones is just, like, very nonchalant. They're just like, oh, whatever. They think it's, like, some sort of antique that can be sold. It's so weird, and it makes no sense. Like, people wouldn't be like, hey, someone died. We should figure out what happened here. People are mainly just like, oh, yeah, you know, it's a skeleton. Off to doing whatever I was going to be doing. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, Roger plays a simpleton very well. Uh, he's actually my favorite character in the film. The way he plays it is so over the top and ridiculous, but it makes it fun and funny. So I love Roger. Love Roger in this film. And then he becomes a villain. Like, I didn't even see that coming. What does Mick think he's going to figure out sneaking into the truck to look at the skeleton? 
I mean, like, you end up finding out, like, how he ends up solving it by going, by breaking into the dentist's office and looking at x-rays of teeth. I mean, it's so insane. And then going back to my question from before, why does he care? Why is this his mystery to solve? Like, I just don't get it. And it draws this line of, like, people from the city actually care. People from this town, like, could care less if their own are dying. It's just, like... It's so whacked. It's people don't seem to be concerned about finding skeleton. I already talked about that. The worm face scene with Roger actually is kind of cool, where the worms work their way into his face. Uh, that looks solid. I enjoyed that, and how he just like went running off. I assumed he was just gonna be dead, but when he re like reappears and he still has the worms in his face, basically, it looks cool. It's fun. But at the same time, it, it brings up the question, like, why is he not dead? Because for everyone else, the worms kill. Like, they will eat you, they will kill you. I guess maybe it's because it wasn't enough worms, because everyone else gets taken by, like, a sea of worms, basically. So with him, I guess maybe it just wasn't enough to kill him. It, it, it's weird. But if they're under his skin when they keep eating, I don't know, it's weird. There's a lot of plot holes in this. But it's a dumb concept, so, like, you know. You kind of have to, <laughs> kind of have to know that probably there are going to be a lot of plot holes. Oh, and the the little bit beforehand where they were trying to work up the tension before the face, the worm face scene happened, where the the container of worms flops over in the boat, and then you see the worms moving towards them. That was supposed to work up tension. In no way did it do that. It just looked really lame. It's like, well, there's some worms. <laughs> okay. People keep talking all about the tourists who come to Fly Creek, Georgia. For what? Like, no one ever says what they're there for. I assume it's the antiques because they talk so much how, like, proud they are of all their antiques that they have. And by the way, Beardsley gets the best stuff from the estates when people die. Like, I guess it's the antiques or is why tourists are coming there. It's weird that they never explicitly explain why tourists come there. Because they they talk about tourists all the time. Like, you get a ton of them. But you see the town through the film, and you're like, for what? Like, what is the tourism here? The worm's going back into the shower head when Jerry turns the knob off. That's not how that works. Um... The worms, her turning that off would not suck the worms back in, especially because there's no water there. And that's not how that works. Like, when you turn the water off, it just stops. Like, it shuts. So everything would keep, you know, like, things stop, but they don't go backwards. It's, it, it's such a wacky thing. But then also, how are they inside the pipe? That's another thing. Like, they stay in the ground. They don't chew through copper and metal and stuff. Like, it, that's another thing. Plot hole. This is crazy. Uh, Willie's chest full of worms was a cool scene. I actually quite like that. But then why was Mick picking up, I think, a shovel? I couldn't tell what it was because it was so quick. Like, a shovel or a rake and just starts beating his body. I'm just like, what? And then the other thing is, like, it seems like Mick has a history of just, like, desecrating people's corpses because he he messes with Beardsley's body, and then there he is beating and crushing Willie's body. It just doesn't even make sense. It's like, why? Uh, and then I put, what the hell? Roger took the skeleton to sell at an auction when they revealed that that's how the skeleton got into the truck because Roger took it because he was going to sell it. This goes back to the whole ex explanation of these people in the town just thinking that a human skeleton is an antique. And this goes back to the writing of rural people are idiots. It's just like, it's nuts, man. I would think the worms would be fleeing the electricity more than light, but they use this really stupid concept of as long as you keep lights on, the worms won't come to get you. Is that a thing? That's not, I don't think that's a thing with worms. It's it's not about light. It's about them staying in the ground. Um, but yeah, if the electricity current is going through it and it's disturbing them so much that they're coming out of the ground, don't you think that that would be the bigger motivator to get them out as opposed to sunlight or any sort of light than pushing them back in? Another plot hole. Doesn't make sense. 
So the worms are still in Roger's face. Wouldn't he be dead? I already talked about that. Sorry. I do quite like the shot of Roger sinking into the flood of worms. That is an awesome scene. That's probably my favorite scene, looks-wise, visually. Um, he, in the end, am I right about this? In the end, he was consumed by his work. I, I, literally drowning in his work. Because that's what he was doing. Do you get it? That's a bad joke, but yeah. I like how the utility worker at the end thinks it's just basically normal that there are two people sleeping in a tree. Like, he's just talking to them like everything's fine, everything's normal. Like, these people are sleeping in a tree. Once again, like, this is that bad writing. There's so much that just happens. It's just like, nah, that's not real. So my final thought on this, human versus nature is, is a big thing going on here. Even though humans usually overcome the harshest that nature has to offer, nature always eventually throws a surprise curveball. And obviously this worm situation being the surprise curveball. Although you can also argue that it's not totally nature because the electricity is what really sends things in flux. And then you could further argue that really it's a it's it's a human problem that because they did something to nature unwittingly but they did something to nature they will then uh have the terrible consequences from it i was thinking about trying to think about the best way to say that but you know you know what i'm trying to say so yeah um like i said i feel like this film's worth seeing one time but you know so i'll rate this in two ways uh as far as as an actual film straight up and as far as a so good it's bad film so Straight up as a film, I would give it one star. Um, there, you know, the directing's not bad. Uh, there are some cool things in it. The special effects look pretty cool. Uh, the sea of worms and everything. So one star. Um, as a so good it's bad film, it's worth one watch. I'm going to put it at two stars. So that's my feeling on it. Put your comments down there. How do you feel about Squirm if you've seen it? Hopefully you have if you've gone this far in the review. But do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, that's your best way to repay me. If you like any video I've ever done, that is how you repay me. You give me that sub subscription. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. I'm tired at the moment. You give me that subscribe. Uh, also hit the notification bell so you know whenever I'm putting up a new movie review video or doing a live stream or whatever. Um, I really do appreciate it. But regardless, thanks for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.